This is Phil Leach. As we consider the date of this letter that Paul wrote to the, the churches there in Galatia, it's going to help us if we're able to establish some dates of the events recorded in the book of Acts. Now, dating in Scripture is notoriously difficult, and the reason is because the authors of these different books, uh, their goal and their intention was not to give chronology and dates in the way that we may be interested today as we look back in history. We think of Kings and Chronicles and the challenges there with the uh, trying to date the, the kings when there's co-regencies and, and different things. But we can do uh, date some things because of findings in, uh, in archaeology and uh, um, records from uh, ancient writers. And so when it comes to the book of Acts, although in some areas we can't be uh, 100% sure, we can certainly get a, a, a pretty good idea. And uh, when you come to study Acts, what you'll notice is that the Council of Jerusalem is really a significant point in the book of Acts. It's almost like a turning point. And in our desire to, to date uh, the, the events in the book of Acts, there are some things that can help to establish the date of the Council of Jerusalem. So although Luke doesn't give us a date for that, we, we do know some things, and the date of this council can be established in two ways. One, by some events that happened before, and some events that happened afterwards. And so, again, we can't be absolutely 100% certain, but we can get a pretty good idea. And so, uh, one date that we know is the death of King Herod, recorded in Acts 12. We know the date of this because of the writings of Josephus, and we're able to uh, date that event in AD 44. King Herod died in uh, AD 44. Another date that we can uh, know is the famine mentioned in Acts 11. This famine, during the time of Claudius, we also know from Josephus uh, that it happened during AD 44 to 48. And so we can give an approximate date of the visit by Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, and uh, just as a guesstimate, we could see that about AD 46. Now, uh, if we look at the evidence we have in the book of Acts, we read that Paul and Barnabas spent time in Antioch after their visit uh, to Jerusalem to take the gift to, to help, with the, uh, help relieve the, the victims of the famine there. And as we look at the missionary journey of Paul, we're able to estimate that this was about 18 months just by reading the places he visited, the travel time from one to another, what happened in these different places, the journey back, we can uh, estimate about 18 months. And then Acts 14.28 says that after he had finished the first missionary journey, he spent no little time in Antioch, back there in Antioch of Syria. Uh, a wonderful litotes of Luke there, you'll notice. But what that means, it was a, a fair amount of time that he spent in Antioch. So if we add this together, we can estimate that this is about three years. And with that uh, adding together, it brings us to the Council of Jerusalem being approximately AD 49. Uh, we're also able to consider some other things too from after the Council of Jerusalem. We know that uh, uh, Claudius expelled the Jews from Rome uh, in AD 49. Again, we, we know this from the uh, ancient writings. 
and we read that the reason Claudius expelled the Jews was because in the Jewish parts of, of Rome there was fighting and rioting and uh, Suetonius records 70 years later that this rioting was over someone called Crestus and many people believe that's a variant spelling of Christos and of course we know in reading Acts as the gospel was preached in many cities the Jews rioted that was part of what happened and what Paul had to deal with and so uh, very probably there was also rioting in Rome over Jesus as Jesus was preached to the Jews there and Claudius's way of dealing with this was simply to say all Jews leave Rome and when we look at, at Acts 18 we read that Priscilla and Aquila had recently come from Rome this is Acts 18 verse 2 there they found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them and so on and so forth. And so uh, as a suggestion, uh, Acts 18.2 would be about AD 50. And another date that we can identify uh, very specifically was the prior consulship of Gallio. In Acts 18 again, in verse 12, we read, But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. Now, there's an inscription that was found stating that Gallio was a proconsul of, of Achaia, and we're able to date that to AD 51 to 52. And so the approximate date for the end of the second missionary journey, uh, considering the journey, time, and these dates, would be about AD 52. And so uh, Acts suggests that Paul spent time in Antioch after the Council of Jerusalem, there in Acts 15, uh, Acts 18.11 says that Paul spent 18 months in Corinth and as a guesstimate the rest of the second missionary journey is AD, uh, sorry, is 18 months and so uh, the suggested time is that this finished three years after the Council of Jerusalem. So if you work your way back, you come back to AD 48, 49. And so, although the Council of Jerusalem is not specifically dated, we do know these four dates, and as you look at the internal evidence, both would point to the Council of Jerusalem being AD 49.